It's a really beautiful morning from this part of the world and I hope that where you are, it is equally beautiful too. You're welcome to Tea or Coffee on High Impact Television. And in case you've lost track of time or you've not been watching or um, checking your calendar, it is Wednesday. And of course, when it is Wednesday, it is Wellness Wednesday on Tea or Coffee. Definitely, I'm not alone. I have with me in the studio <laughs> a gorgeous, amazing, mm -hmm. beautiful, yeah. wonderful. Woo! I thought you were going to go on and on and on. No, 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 but please then, don't let me flatter you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, and How are you doing? this morning. Oh, thank oh, you. It's day. Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So. I thought the whole pink was going to last for October. Uh, no, today is actually just a month. coincidence. It was not deliberate. It was just like, okay, yeah, let's just do and it. You have the pink lipstick on. Yeah, coincidentally. <laughs> <laughs> but you still look good either way. Thank you. Okay. I could say the same for you. You look gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, how were you? How well did you sleep today? Oh, well, I slept well. How was your night? Okay. Exactly, because <laughs> we, I, I remember mentioning that to you this morning. I yeah. saw you and I said, okay, <clears throat> Shion, good morning. How was your night? And there was and something you forced. told me. I, I, I had to tell you that we would mention it on air because a lot of people do not know this. So, mm -hmm. how was your night? Okay. First of, I actually, to an extent, I'm indifferent to it. Mm -hmm. How was your night? In some cultures, is regarded as offensive because they believe that, um, when you're asking how was your night, you're, you're being too intrusive into their private life, yes. Okay. But then there are some people, so not just in some other cultures, here in Nigeria too, there are some people that when you ask how was your night, they first pause and be like... But you know, I, I actually didn't know that until this morning when mm. I told you good morning, how was your night, before the show. Yeah. And then yeah. you mentioned to me that, okay, you know, how was your night is not, doesn't sound pleasant to some people. To some people. But then, in my own way, I feel me asking is to show that I care about you. Mm -hmm. And there, there are actually things that could go wrong in A the whole night. Lot. Trust me, I've seen people who slept and then from their sleep, they actually came up with attacks or issues. Mm. Then the following month, a friend of mine that didn't have a headache, he said it was fine all through the day. He didn't even stress himself on anything. He didn't go out. He was at home all through the day and then in the night by 2 a.m. at night then he woke up and he started feeling headache wow and i'm like okay wow. that's so the following morning i asked how was your night it was the question of me asking how was your night yeah, like, that brought about good. him explaining that okay all through the night i had headache i could not sleep well so when you mentioned asking oh, how yeah, was your night, yeah, and I was, yeah, that's one very tricky thing about etiquette and courtesy. There are a lot of people that you know what they say sometimes: what is sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. Sometimes it does not hold. In fact, another one to it is: do you know that there are sometimes some people don't like it if you don't have a relationship with them, mm -hmm. address them as dear, like. If I don't know you, I'm my just dear. saying hello, dear, or my dear. Some people consider it really offensive. Are you sure? Because yeah. a, a lot I've of met people... people... like I've read stuff like that on social media about how it repels them. Like, once you just go, my dear, hello, dear, no. It's they just, feel you have mm. um, more than friendship with them? or Oh, no. Some just feel like you're trying to... You're getting ahead of yourself or you're trying to be too familiar. Yes. But then, if you're going to look at it... Okay, imagine if... Um, I see you with a frowny face or a long face and I want you to smile. Rather than come and just say morning and walk away, I would want to say something that would probably put a smile on your face. Imagine someone walking up to me and like, hello dear, good morning, with a smile. <laughs> I mean, no matter yeah. what is wrong with me, I would respond with a smile also and a bright face. So I... That is because I it is you. Like I, I said, don't that feel it lot, is wrong. Etiquette and courtesy can be quite tricky. What applies to some people does not apply to some yeah, other I, people. Yeah, I understand that, that what applies to you might not apply to me. But then in this part of the world, this our society here in Nigeria, I feel, because a lot of people, I chat with people and then you go, hello there, morning there, and you don't read meaning to it. I don't read meaning to it. You don't read meaning to it. There's something about if you have intentions, it's not... Um, the words you're using that would explain if you have intentions or not. You spell it out. Okay, if you want to be in a relationship with me, you spell it out. It is not for me to start judging that, okay, because you just said 
hello dear or good morning not dear. necessarily it has so brought about me having a, a deeper it relationship could even be the same you. sex some just feel like it is not uh, some don't just like the idea you know the same way some people consider it really annoying when you tell them they greet you good morning and you reply them morning Exactly. I saw <laughs> a post. One, I saw a that post. one strikes <laughs> off like I saw a post Some people get about on, it. On um on a social media platform and it says that okay, for most of you that when they tell you good morning, you, you skip out morning. the good, <laughs> good and just say morning. What do you want to do with the good? I know. Like so what, because I really would rude. it affect you if you do not say good morning? Mm -hmm. But then I'm I've been a victim of this several times where I just say morning because I don't know. So I what just, if someone tells you good morning and you don't... Are especially you especially times where um, I feel I'm not in the mood to chat or something okay. and I need you to realize that, okay, I am not in that mood for chatting all day long and all. Ah. So you send me good morning. I actually want to pass a message across right. to you that, okay, you know what? I'm not in the mood to chat. Don't come giving me things to talk about. I don't think I want to chat today. I think that's all. where emotional intelligence comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of the 21st century skills that people really need to be abreast of in the workplace. Communication skills, emotional intelligence. And you know, recently you we had Victoria, Victoria Odimba talk about mm -hmm. work etiquette. But yes. then, these are personal etiquettes that you should know. As much as we would have respect for cultures, now, you have to respect wherever you go to, even if it's not your culture, you have to respect their culture, yes. their beliefs, their yes. values and all. But then, for me, okay, maybe from tomorrow, yeah, I would we'll ask, definitely... before I say morning, dear, I would ask, oh, can I call on, you, that dear? That is not possible. <laughs> Emotional intelligence, just watch the face of the person or you watch the expressions. But then know? how do I know that your culture does not permit or allow you to read say up my dear, dear to read someone? up. Fine, no problem. <laughs> I think I'll need to know more about that. Maybe behind the camera yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. learn more about that. How about today being World Diabetes Day? Oh yes, November 14th, worldwide is celebrated as World Diabetes Day. Exactly. And um, what do you know about diabetes? One thing I know about diabetes is the fact that if you do not pay attention to it at the early stage, you hear people say diabetic retinopathy, that is yeah, where it leads to blindness. It, mm -hmm. brings a, it comes along with a lot of complications. Yes. Now, the, yesterday I was speaking with someone jokingly and I said, um, the person said, okay, I'm feeling slight headache. And next thing I said, well, like, it will not kill you. And the person says, wow. you never can tell what can kill someone, yes. especially when you do not pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Constant headache every time could actually kill someone. It could even if you be do a, not, a, a symptom of something more of important. Something more, more serious, yes, so it yes. is important that even when you feel any slight thing, you need to pay attention to your yes. health, your body. If you see any change, you realize that, okay, this... I told... Um, Okay, it was wrong here and I on the show, and I told her that even if I find a pimple on my face, <laughs> I want to know what is wrong. Okay. I, 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 I can tell maybe if I'm trying, if I'm reacting to something or there's something I am doing that is not right, right because normally yes. I don't have pimples on my face. So okay. having it makes me concerned. Now that is me. That is me. Um, you know, paying understanding attention. my body and paying attention to my body. And when you see something wrong. You first thing to do, you go for a medical checkup. So in the case of diabetes, I think we need to give constantly awareness of yes. people having to check themselves every time before it gets to a point of complication or a point where you have to spend a whole lot and to treat the start disease. running about, you know, yes. to treat the disease. So right as you've heard from Wuraola, that. Diabetes, in case you, know, you don't know, is no longer age-specific. Anybody can have diabetes because we have different types of diabetes. So you should actually do a um, periodic medical checkup, wellness check from time to time because it helps. You know, there are some things that in your body that if you're not aware of them, if you don't do them checkup, once you start seeing the symptoms, things might already be getting too late. So mm -hmm. that was quite, you know, that, that's yes. really a call to action. So yes, I and, and you know, I, I think that. another thing, because a lot of people, when they hear diabetes, they just feel that, okay, you need to reduce the intake of, of sugar. sugar. But yeah. then these things can actually be hereditary if yeah. you're not careful. If you realize that, okay, this is something that runs in the blood or this is something that you runs in the family, yeah. then you have a higher risk of, um, of having diabetes. And mm -hmm. this was something that we had a specialist on 
the show to talk, talk about, about it. So yes, I remember. You have the higher risk and the higher you pay attention, the better, the better for, for you. you. Yes. Exactly. So today we are talking about drug resistance. Of course, you know you always have to stay tuned for you to know more about the topic of today, the discussion and the expert in the house that has to do with our topic. We will go on a quick break now and when we come back, we will be going into today's topic of discussion. Please don't go anywhere. I met, I met her in um, 1985, we got married in 1988, so we had like three years of courtship. He can do feminine children, I don't mean washing plates or whatever. He can go to, he can come back from outside, he has gone to the market, he's bought meat, tomato, everything I need in the kitchen to cook. I said, go to the kitchen, I got some things. He would just, many men would not like to go to the market. When I was in England, and um, I got a message from her, and that message made me love her. Well, it was an exam result, and I didn't do too well before I left for England. So, when the father died, and I wrote him a letter of condolence, he started writing letters asking me, and I wasn't even sure whether I wanted to say yes. And I was dodging the question. I replied the letter, but I was judging that question for a while. And this musician was uh, singing at that time, fire, 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 get on. And they said this musician should stop singing that um, song. Maybe that was the cause of the um, outbreaks. So I told him that joke. He said, that is not what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> Experience the excitement at High Impact Planet Amusement Park and Resort. Our state-of-art facility offer amazing outdoor rides, play houses, indoor games, and dining facilities. Thrill your student with a lifetime memorable excursion trip. High Impact Planet. Fun just got real. Welcome back. It's still to your coffee. You know, before we went on the break, actually, we were, we were so excited and delighted about the show to the point that we forgot to mention our names. <laughs> so just in case you're just joining, I am Uraula Pokwala, and I have here with me the beautiful <laughs> Sheun Olushegun. Yeah, Uruwa yes, Sheun Olushegun. Pretty, <laughs> yes, as usual. And she's, uh, besides being a presenter, she's also a health correspondent. Yes. Okay, so welcome back. Yeah, and we have our guest in the studio to talk about drug resistance. We have Muiwa Olagunju. He is the national chairman of the Young Pharmacist Group, an interest group of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. Prior to his election as national chairman, pharmacist Muiwa was the Lagos State Coordinator of the group where he called the execution of various projects, one of which was the NAVDAC Young Pharmacist Against Drug Abuse Campaign. Wow, a whole lot. Accolades rolling, <laughs> like so many accolades. I know, yeah. right? How are you doing, where you are? All right, I'm doing very fine. You know, being, having to stay young and, you know, achieve all of this, mm. impacting lives of mm. people of your class mm. and your age. So, mm. as the national chairman of okay. the Young Pharmacist Group, what exactly do you do? How do you help the young pharmacist? Okay, um, as it is now, we noticed over the years that there's been a gap between leaving school and then our larger society. Now we have a society which is called the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, mm -hmm. where you have our older colleagues. So um, as a way of bridging the gap, we had to come up with the Young Pharmacist Group. It has been for a while, but um, in a few years, just in a few years, about three years, that was um, 
within the three years, that's when we came up with our bylaws okay. and every other documentation that we needed to do to um, come up and running fully. Okay. So um, our major role is to bridge the gap, do you understand, okay. for okay. young pharmacists, make our voices heard okay. even Why? in the larger society and then make impact as much as possible. Okay, okay. as you were reading um, um, about the me there, mm -hmm. you talk about the Yada project. Yes. So um, we came in conjunction with um, NAFDAC. Okay. That was last year. The project okay. started um, early this year. So we dropped a proposal with them, and then we we are on the project presently. Okay. So when you may, when you say young, okay. is there an age bracket for? Yes. The group? Okay. Um, young pharmacists are pharmacists below thirty five years, okay. and or less than five years post graduation. Oh. Oh. So for instance, now yes. So for instance, if um, you're forty years old and then you're still five years below graduation, as in mm -hmm. five years after graduation. You're okay. still a young pharmacist. Oh, okay. And then if per adventure you are, let's say, 28, and then you're even, maybe you are past five years post-graduation, you're still a young pharmacist. Oh, okay. okay. So that's young. why we said and or. Okay, mm -hmm. young. Interesting. Oh, well, good to have an insight into who the young pharmacists are. Right. Now, having an insight and going straight into our topic for today, okay. drug resistance. Mm -hmm. uh, not ordinarily, if I, I as a layman can just um, define drug resistance, it would be, okay, drug resistance. But then from the professional point of view and the real context, what is drug resistance? Okay. Um, in the real context, I'll still make it simple to um, everyone to understand. Definitely. Understand? Okay. Drug abuse in itself is a um, reduction okay. in the effectiveness of a drug reduction in the effectiveness of a drug. Now, a drug is meant to be for a particular purpose. The, uh, the drug is supposed to either alleviate a disease or reduce a disease condition or totally eradicate it. So at the point where the drug cannot do up to the optimal level, which is expected to, then we define as drug resistance. So in a nutshell, I say drug resistance is the reduction in the effectiveness of a drug to deliver its... What it's supposed to do. Yes, its outcome, okay. its expected outcome, which might be alleviation of a disease condition or um, curing a okay. disease condition. Okay, so tell us what are the factors that, you okay. know, could lead to drug yeah, resistance? Yeah, necessitate this. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> you know, first of all, drug abuse is a, is a global Resistance, problem. Resistance, you mean? Um, sorry, drug, drug resistance. Yes. I'm sorry okay. about that. Um, drug resistance is um, a global problem presently. And then one of the major factors that's been causing it is drug misuse okay. and drug overuse. Overuse. Wow. Somebody comes to the pharmacy and says, um, please give me antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised. I'm wondering, why are you asking me for antibiotics? What is the issue? Okay, I ask you, um, what are you treating what is the issue? And then you'll come on and say, yeah, just give me antibiotics. And For I'm like, what? really? <laughs> you know? And you don't even and then, know what is wrong or why you want to do yeah. that. And then, and then I'm asking you, tell me, okay, what is wrong with you? And, uh, and you just say, give me antibiotics. Okay, it's one of two things. I'd say, I'm sorry, sir, or I'm sorry, ma. I can't just give you because okay. I'm a custodian of this thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing this for your good. You understand exactly. To. You understand. I'm, I'm accountable to you because I'm presently now and here. I'm in the custody of this drug, yes. so I determine who gets this drug or not. Yes. You understand. So, but if you come and give me a prescription that okay, well, this is a drug, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have a choice at that point in time because there's a written document yes. to back it up with authority, a signature of a doctor to your hand, or. Um, maybe subsequently, okay, we'll see that, okay, there is real need for it Wait. at that point in time. But if there's no need for it, I'm sorry, I will not be able to give you. So, um, in the general sense, 
drug abuse and um, drug misuse. You seem to like drug abuse. Drug abuse. You, you know, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that's that the, that's the, yes. That's topic. You, you know, you know. I told you. You know, I told you about the Yada project. Yeah. The yes. The youth against drug abuse. drug abuse. So that's to tell you that I've been okay. immersed in that yes. project. So much apparently. <laughs> but let's bring you back so, to so drug we're resistance. Back to yes. Drug resistance. But at the same time, do you know that for drug resistance to come up, abuse. Will still come taken, into yes, yes. And self medication too. And self medication. Yes. You understand? Okay. Um okay, somebody comes and says, Okay, ah, I use them maybe Amoxil today and then what is doing me is not uh, is not going. Give me another another one. Type mm. of Amoxil. Is either another type of Amoxil or another antibiotic. Okay. You understand? Okay, another another one is Somebody is having cold. You understand? Somebody comes down with a cold or a flu, and then the next thing you're asking is that, ah, this cold has been disturbing me since day before yesterday or for mm. like one week now. Just give me antibiotics, as you said. Mm. And I'm like, okay, antibiotics does not solve the problem of problem. cold. Problem. So it is cold is a viral better. infection. Mm -hmm. So it is better for you to, you know, speak to a doctor to guide you then. Do you understand? And I think I like the fact that you actually questioned this um and people when they come exactly. for drugs. That is that very because, paramount, yes, really. Because I have actually been um, in a situation where I went to the pharmacy to get um, a drug that was prescribed to me. Okay. But then a woman walks in, the woman walks in and she's like, okay, um, my baby has um, kata and all that, so give me this, this, this. And the, doctor. the pharmacist was like, doctor. okay. And what she was even asking for had mm. to do with chest problem. Wow. And she wanted to give it to her baby. Mm. And immediately, the pharmacist actually gave it to her. Okay. And Without questioning. Trust me, I turned back because I didn't even buy what I wanted to buy. <laughs> you don't day. trust such a person. Exactly. Why would a woman come down with a baby? And mm. you're, you mentioned the fact that, this, um, that these drugs, mm. when you, they come in like that, you tell them, Sorry, I can't give it to you. Mm. But then he didn't ask any question. Mm. How I got to know that that drug was for chest pain because I've seen a friend of mine use it, use it before oh. for chest pain. And then oh. you are pres you're giving the woman, because she asked for it, you're giving it to her. Just like that. If, trust me, we did like turn back. So it would actually mm. be good if we if have the, yes. a lot of pharmacists do, do what you are doing, do. you know. Yeah. Question and, and are, let them know that mm. these drugs can't be used for that purpose. Mm. And those are some of the things we advocate for. You mm -hmm. understand? Ask as uh, many questions as possible. Um, okay, something happened one day and um, a patient walked in and um, complained something. Just say, give me this particular drug. And as my normal way would be, mm -hmm. I need to ask what you're using it for so that I can advise you better. You understand? I know much more about this drug than, than you, you think. Than you, you understand? Are. Or you do ahead. So I'll be in the best position to tell you if it's suitable for your condition or not. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, next thing you will just say was, ah, you asked too many questions. Wow. Thank God a colleague of mine was around and was like, sir, he needs to ask those questions. And he's asking those questions for you. For your, for your good, yes. not, not for himself. You understand? Because mm -hmm. you can't tell me you have, um, okay, for instance, now, somebody comes in and says um, he, he wants ibuprofen, for instance. And then, um, one of the questions I ask you is, do you have ulcer? Okay, so that because drug I know that, is meant yes. for ulcer patients? No, a contraindication. It's not, I yes, suppose. contraindication. Yes. Okay. In. Do you understand? So I know that, okay, as an ulcer patient, you are you not shouldn't. supposed to, yes. to or use, use it, with okay. caution. Hmm. You get? Mm -hmm. So these are some of the reasons why you need to ask questions. questions. Okay. You understand? Don't just wow. come in breezing as if uh, you know what to use. You, and then, you know, you know and then the pharmacist is asking you, okay, just tell me more about this thing yeah. so that I can advise you better mm -hmm. on it. And then you had the better for it. You get. Yeah. So. so I hope, you know, our viewers are watching and they take heed mm. to that. Now, still talking about the topic of drug resistance. Okay. Um, I am, are there different types of it? Because I know recently there was a time that, um, okay, not maybe not so recent, but there was a time that they said malarial drugs, some malarial drugs no longer work the way mm. they used to. I mean, mm. when we grew up, we knew all those really bitter quinine and all yeah. that, you know, they used to work. Yeah, and all of a sudden, 
we started having different types and um, some yeah. medical bodies were like, okay, they are no longer working. Mm. That's for malaria. I know about antibiotics now. Mm. So malaria. So are there other types okay. of drug resistance? Okay, yes. Um, the, the resistance to um, anti-malaria, as you rightly said, the resistance to anti-neoplastic drugs, anti-cancer drugs, what are anti drugs? Yes. Anti cancer drugs, drugs okay. used okay. in the treatment of cancer. cancer. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. There are resistance to, there are, there are some resistances that have been found to, to um, anti tuberculosis drugs. Okay. Oh. Yes. Understand. And then, then on the wider scope, antibiotics generally. Okay. So those are, those are some of the aspects that um, we have started noticing resistance. Drug resistance. Um, cancer in um, antibiotics generally and then anti-malaria and then as it is now anti-malaria you, you know okay okay let's come to anti-malaria now okay, okay. anti-malaria is another very interesting part that people abuse a lot somebody comes in and tells you okay give me anti-malaria the person comes complains this one this one down and, down, and okay the next thing you say the the, the patient tells you i know i have malaria <laughs> I tell the patient that okay, have you gone? Have you gone to the hospital? Um, have tests been carried out? It's just you no. no, you just know. know it. You know, I'm I'm and you know, know. know is actually this common illness. Yes. yes. Once you come up with fever, mm. it's like, uh, like no, I malaria. just know I have malaria. I want mosquito beats me. And I just malaria. Know. <laughs> but, but, but the but the thing is, it's not always so. Mm -hmm. Do you get? It's mm -hmm. not always so, and that is why resistance is coming up on that anti In fact, many people now, by the time they use atemita lumefantrin generally now, they've abused it to the extent that it doesn't work for them anymore. Anymore. Wow. You understand? Now, there are other ACT, ACT combinations, do you understand? Like uh, diadroatemicinin, papyraquine. You understand? I'm okay. What's that term? <laughs> that compound sounds so low now, that what, I'm lost. What, what exactly does understand? it mean? Okay. Um, Dihydroatemicinin okay. and papyraquine okay. is a combination. You okay. understand, and then is 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 another um, another coined part. You know, most of these drugs, what they just do is molecular transformation. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you understand? They just switch here, switch there. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So basically, that, and then um, the reasons for that is because of the resistances that are coming to the previous ones. Wow. Do you understand? Okay. So they, they they try to do some modifications. You get modifications. Um, the chemistry of it, sometimes they bring in OH at a particular point. Sorry for boring you with No, we're not boring. It's very Yeah, and it's resting So, so, so and, then, and then, okay. Like, for instance, now, is um, somebody comes and then the atomitan refractory doesn't work for the person anymore. Okay. okay. You think of what other combination to give. Do you understand? Okay. They are, they are um, aside even the director uh, at Emicinin, Papera Queen, the other ones like um, Atesinate and Mudia Queen. Okay. Do you understand? I the think I know Atesinate. Yes. 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 That's, that's yes. a common. So, yes, Atesinate and Mudia Queen, Eflo Queen, and some other ones like mm -hmm. that that you will give, which will still be effective at that initial stage if not abused. Okay. okay. Do you get, mm -hmm. if not abuse? And one of the things we, we, we also advise people is that, okay, instead of having to treat malaria every time, why not prevent? Mm. Why not make use of mosquito nets? So prevention is better than... Ah, talk, talking of m mosquito nets, okay, talking of uh, prevention. Now, there was a time, there was a time that um, we heard that mal um, mosquitoes mm -hmm. I started you know getting shield and all that of course that's one very interesting conversation I would really like to get into but then we have to go on a quick break mm -hmm. and then when we come back we're going to get more into drug resistance please right. don't go anywhere because you don't want to miss this we'll right. be right back <laughs> A couple of days before getting married, she finds Oscar, her fiancé, cheating on her. Morena escapes from her pain by traveling away from her life to a beautiful place in the jungle. There, she meets Leo. 
the man who saves her from a Jaguar attack. Due to a photograph in the bag that Morena had lost, Leo realizes he is not who he thought he was. So he travels to the city to find out about his real origins. Not aware that he belongs to the Sirenios, a wealthy and powerful family. Leo gets involved in the murder of Morena's grandfather by Aldo Sirenio. So they will have to overcome the barriers that will emerge in their lives so they can live their passion. Morena. Weekdays on High Impact Television. <laughs> Your father is dead. I want to learn Ushu. You think you can master the art of ages? Ushu is a meditation. It's not made for hate or revenge. Smuggling opium, kidnapping villagers for transport to forced labor. My daughter is priceless. What do you know of my father? He has brought nothing but pain and hardship to my people. No! Isn't father wonderful? It's still tea or coffee on high impact television. Yes, yeah, we, we're getting questions already, but in case you have more questions about drug resistance that you would love to ask our guests, then definitely you need to keep rolling in the questions, yes, and be sure that we would ask the question and you get the response to your question. And drop them on our social media pages yes, on our too, social yes, media High, pages, Impact High Impact TV. Yes. On Instagram, High Impact TV, Twitter. at High Impact TV on Twitter on Facebook too. Facebook, yes. yes. And just in case, you know, you have missed maybe some of our episodes back then, you can check it up on YouTube also. And subscribe. Yes, that <laughs> is quite important, <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> okay, so before we went on break, show you were mentioning the fact that... Yes. Okay, so I was talking about how... <clears throat> The mosquito mosquitoes, yes. yes, those things, those tiny Have things were very now. mighty. You know, there was a time that um, before mosquitoes, you use a small coil or you use a small spray, mosquito spray, mm. and they are gone. But mm. these days, it's like they smoke those things and get high and come back in full force. <laughs> get high. <laughs> I mean, so is that some sort of resistance on their own part? Have they grown resistant now that we have to modify drugs? Please just shed more light on that. Okay. Um... That's very true. The they are growing resistance. Wow. That's yes. That is the truth. Do you understand? The parasites themselves are growing resistance. The uh, the organisms, organisms. themselves mm -hmm. are growing resistance. You understand? And then that's why that's why now you use normal coil, as you said, mosquito coil that you use some time ago and then before you know, everywhere is sanitized, you know. Mm -hmm. And now you use like 20 nothing. and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, a few days ago, I, I, I used an insecticide, hoping that, okay, when I get back, everywhere is clear. <laughs> you won't believe that that night. I still had one or two mosquitoes. Really? Uh, sure. you know, and that so thing can be so frustrating so because was, after you spray, you feel was, that, okay, yeah, you're everywhere safe. you're it was, safe. It was sincerely annoying. I can only imagine, see, I have the scenario in my head that, okay, just like a Roman um, uh, Empire movie, mm. and then they all have their shields and their swords, and like, <laughs> we will fight you back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Wow. Yeah. And all then, right. And then um, one of the things we do is... Um, the advantage of mosquito nets, that's why mm -hmm. they call them um, um, treated. They are okay. treated nets, you understand? Mosquito treated nets. Yes. So they don't just come as nets. 
You understand? They are treated with um, insecticides. You understand? And that's why you are advised that when you buy, first put under the sun to reduce the intensity of the the um, the insecticide on it so that it doesn't irritate the skin. Yes, can, and yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And then so so as much as possible people should make use of mosquito nets. I to think um, yes. I think it will help curb that uh, malaria, malaria. And then another thing people could do is um, the the cream, you know, there are some okay, creams now. Yeah, yeah. Yes, there are, there are the some. Yes, mosquito repellent, yes, repellent, yes. yes. Mosquito repellent creams now that people could use that could help um, prevent. But I heard that those creams can actually have a negative effect on your skin also. Well, depending um, on kind of for skin people you with have. For people with sensitive skins, you might not use. Okay. You might okay. just use your normal insecticides in your rooms, okay. uh, here, and then the mosquito nets. But okay. if you know you have um strong or thick uh, skin <laughs> and you know that your skin can take yeah, anything, take anything. <laughs> use it and you'll be fine yeah. you understand the only thing that will happen is that maybe you would have to repeat the use after every four hours maybe um okay. you know at some point you may have faded off your skin off, yes. uh, hair and all that so so you just reapply and that's all basically Okay, we actually have questions from our viewers for okay. you rolling okay. in already. Yeah. And this one is from Charles Ikeja. And he says, he's painting a scenario whereby you, you're told to use a malaria drug. And then at the end of the day, they give you instruction of you not yeah, taking yes. like vitamin C okay. and all. Mm. So now, what exactly is wrong? Does it mean that vitamin C can be a form of drug resistance? I think that is what he's trying to say. Okay, okay. There's something called interaction okay. for drugs. We have drug-drug interaction. interaction. We okay. have drug-food yes. interaction. interaction. You yes. understand? So in this case now, what is happening here is drug-drug interaction. interaction. So if you use vitamin C with it, there are other vitamins too, like vitamin A. Okay. Do you understand? Basically, some of those very um, strong antioxidants, do you understand, they, they, they will interact with the drug. Do you understand? So instead of you getting the effectiveness mm -hmm. of the anti, uh, anti malaria itself, um, the vitamin C will curb it. Oh. Okay. So it reduces it? Yes. Okay. Reduces but it does not uh, constitute any form of resistance? Not necessarily resistance. Okay. But you know that at the end of the day, it will cause resistance. How? Okay. You're using a drug, a, a drug that is supposed to serve you optimally. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because you've used a drug that is countering the effect the of that of that drug. Of that drug. Mm -hmm. You don't get the optimal um result okay. from that drug hence you have to do Repeat a reuse yes, do you understand yes, yes. and then you're tending towards resistance, resistance. Oh, okay. and do talking about dosage there's this one that i'm sure yeah you looking at me you're guilty of it mm. people not completing their dosage once they start Oof. feeling well Oof. yes a lot of people oh, not oh, even oh. you why do I feel I like? Also <laughs> I just knew it. I just knew it. I am also a victim because I they feel are that. Guilty. You know, most times for mm. me, mm. what happens is that I feel that okay, I have used the drug. That okay. now it's work. You have completed your work. I am fine now. Mm. You've made your points. Mm. Can I mm. be free mm. now? Mm. So, so I just stop using it. Okay. So okay. then okay. what now happens that next time I notice that the symptoms again, then I continue from where I stopped. Mm. What? Mm. Really? Mm. Exactly. Really? I'm telling okay. you okay. what happens okay. to me. Okay. okay. Um, these are some of the little things. Very little, but impactful. Little things that cause resistance. Okay. Wow. Now, a drug is supposed to be used for three days. Let's say at emetalumephantrine, for instance. Research has been carried out on this drug. The company that brought about the drug, uh, the researchers, they've done clinical trials on the drug, and then they've been able to come up with, okay, between so-so time and so-so time, this drug does this. So-so time to so-so time, this drug does this. For every Point, um, for a, every transition point like that, there's a particular function the drug performs at each point. Mm. So when you interrupt it by not completing your dose, you're doing yourself harm. Wow. Mm. Because it has not completely cured. cured. Okay. Wow. Do you understand? It's like cutting a tree. You get cut last. You, um, or, or let's say axe. You cut, 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 cut. Cut to an extent. And then you see it that it it's just comes cut. down. Okay. It has not come down completely. Mm -hmm. It just bent. It bent, yes. 
Do you understand? Yes. At the end of the day, if if it's if it's if it's a tree that can regrow easily, it will regrow. Do you understand my point? Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what happens in this case. If you don't allow, if you don't complete the dose, then you have recrudescence. Do okay. you understand? Reinfection. Mm. Do you understand? Because a particular course was not finished. Okay. You get, and then these are the things that add up to resistance. And the unfortunate thing is that if resistance gets to a level that no antibiotic can actually cure yeah. a particular problem, problem then that's trouble. everybody's in trouble. That is trouble. Everybody. I can only imagine. And still on that that's one. Why, that's why you hear them say she's not responding to treatment. Treatment, Thank yes. Thank you. You know, still on that one. So there was this joke I saw online about okay. a lady, you know, taking her drug. She was supposed to take her drug by 3 o'clock and okay. then she so took she her drug. To she wanted to surprise the bacteria. <laughs> <I don't imagine. laughs> so now, uh, uh, talking about that, um, if a doctor tells you, prescribes a drug that you should take maybe a, two doses, you know, mm. one by 9 a.m. and the other by 9 p.m., mm -hmm. and you take it because of time or your busy schedule and all mm -hmm. that, you take it about 12 p.m., mm -hmm. does it affect the effectiveness? It actually affects. It oh, actually yeah. affects. But what we advise is, okay, immediately you remember, take mm -hmm. it. Take it. You get Take it and then try as much as possible not to miss the subsequent doses. Okay. You get okay. so if you miss a particular one, um, just just try use it at that point in time that you remember. But the subsequent doses ensure that you don't miss them. Okay. So that's why when you come to a pharmacy store like that or a hospital, they give you instructions to follow. And then for for me, and then even generally, it's best if you're uh, you're you're labeling a drug for a patient. Write maybe 12 hourly instead of mm. saying morning, night. Night, okay, specifics. Oh, okay. Specifics. That helps too. You get so All that right. even the person knows that, okay, well, I'm supposed to take this, this is time. You follow it judiciously. Okay, wow. so. And then for, for anti malaria, for instance, now, like at the metalumefantrine, for instance, they tell you that the first dose to the second dose, eight hours. Okay. Some people do 12 hours, it's not right. Oh. Yes. So you have right. to follow, follow it strictly, hours. specifically. Yes. Okay. First, second dose, eight hours difference. Then the third dose will be 24 hours after the after, first dose. Okay. Not after the second dose. 24 after hours the after first. the first dose. Uh -huh. okay. So you have 0, 8, 24, 24. 36, 48, like that, like till that. you get to the last okay. dose. All right. Okay, so we have a question from okay. Naomi Kenya. And she says that what effect would cool cold drinks or water have on drugs? And soda. And I think, yeah. So, okay, yeah. she added soda. Talking also. about soda, yes. yes. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think I can relate to that drugs. question because okay. I, I was speaking with one of my aunties and she said that before she gives her children um, drugs they use for worms, okay. when you want to deworm the drugs, okay. that she, t she gives them like a drink or a, um, she gives them something sweet to take mm -hmm. so it would bring out the worms before she... <laughs> That it will bring out the worms so the um, medication can attack them one by one. So, actually, what effect do this? this You're taking have your drugs with soda drugs, and yes. all that too. Okay, okay. L let me really talk on the one you just, the scenario you just scenario painted. Just yes. Prior to now, um, plenty years back, you know, um, the way people know that you have used um, a deworming tablet mm -hmm. is when you excrete the worm. That's when they know that you have used. But now, such don't happen, you understand, they don't mm -hmm. happen regularly now. I remember that time, you know, when you use one um, anti worm, when I was still very small, you would just go to toilet or one place, <laughs> you would just sit down there, excrete it out, you would see live worm. What? But yes. these days, yes. most, most of the drugs now actually kill, kill the worms. Mm. Do you understand? Okay. They chop them off like to like disintegrate blend them. them, yes. Wow. Like they disintegrate them. So you don't have cases of having to excrete, excrete them warming. or something like mm -hmm. that, you understand? And then some of them, some of some of those um those deworming tablets don't really need maybe sweet things or this thing. For the some of them, out. some of them, if you use no wahala. If you don't use no wahala, you understand. No so wahala, that's why that's why no for problem. every of the yeah. yes. Because yes. our viewers are not our just country, Nigeria, not just yeah. Sorry, no, 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 no problem. problem. You understand? Okay. At at that point in time. That's for the warming tablet. Maybe talk about um 
um, abendazole mm. and some of other ones like that. Then coming to drugs themselves, you know I talked about um, drug, drug food, food interaction. interaction. So you have to be careful. You have to be careful the particular drug you are using at that point mm -hmm. in time. Mm -hmm. If you are doing something like paracetamol, paracetamol might not have any effect. any yes any negative effect when it comes to taking with maybe a drink. Okay. You get ahead, but there are other drugs that you don't use with food. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. There are other drugs you use before food. Ooh, there are some yes. you use after, after food. food. So in cases like that, you must know the instructions that follow those drugs before you will. So that's why you will go ask, please, can I use it with? Are there examples of those drugs that, you know, you should use maybe on empty stomach? Because okay. I know the ones that we've known is you always mm -hmm. have to eat before yes, you. Yes, before yes. Yes. Are there okay. common examples? Okay, erythromycin, for instance. What's okay. that? Erythromycin. What does it do? Okay, I think it has to do with blood. No, no, no. It's an antibiotic. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I thought erythro. Okay. Yeah, erythro All right. Erythromycin, for okay. instance, you have to use before food. Before, you okay. And some other ones like that. So that's why you give, you ask, ask your, your pharmacist, ask, please, can I take with a drink mm -hmm. or not? So there is this one question from GT in Dubai. And um, he said, taking multivitamins for too long. Do they have any effects? Multivitamins. What are multivitamins in the first place? Multivitamins are combination of plenty vitamins. Okay. okay. You understand? And what they do is they help augment food. In the sense that you, when you, you're eating and your body is not getting the optimum level of vitamins the body so needs, you just augment Okay. with your multivitamin. So, augmenting with the multivitamin is actually a good idea. So, there is nothing yes. to be scared of there's using nothing, it long term? There's nothing to be scared of. Oh, okay. mm. There's nothing to be scared of, um, except if you know that maybe you are trying to prevent something, maybe you are trying to prevent um, diabetes, maybe you are a known diabetic patient. Uh -huh. okay. there, are, there are some, there are some uh, multivitamins or drugs that has to be used with caution while you're taking your drugs mm -hmm. or even for you as uh, uh, a diabetic patient, you okay. get, and some other conditions too like that. So if you know that you are free from all those other um, terminal diseases or um, conditions with special attention, Okay. then you're free to use multivitamins. Okay, so we have Bola from Ogudo, and she says that drug resistance is also a thing, a public health issue that we should, you know, look out for. What are the ways or things we can do, you know, to, to, to help it? and resolve this yes. in the society? Okay. That's, okay. That's important. The, truth, the truth of the matter is that everyone has a role. Okay. As a, as a, uh, as a health professional, I have a role to play. You, as the consumer of the drug, you have a role to play. The government has a role to play in policy making. Okay. So now, for individuals, their roles, number one, be aware. Okay. Number two, use your drugs as prescribed. Okay. Don't, don't give yourself your be own... Compliance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Be compliant. And obedience. Yes. Don't give, your own, your, uh, don't give yourself your own, um, your own prescription style. You get, don't label for yourself. Follow, you've been told, use this this way. Just follow it. Mm -hmm. Number three, finish your drugs. Can you hear that? Finish it. <laughs> no, Ted, no problem. Finish <laughs> it. Okay, for instance, now, um, a drug like, okay, we're talking about anti-malaria, for instance, mm -hmm. now. One that you're supposed to use for three days. Finish the three days. It will not harm you. There are actually mm -hmm. drugs that you can take for like a month. Yes. There are some you wow. use for a month depending on the condition. Yes. Condition, yes. yes depending yes. on the condition. And that is what discourages me that once I am well, I don't feel, except, especially the counting ones. Okay. The one they count into. Okay. You, okay. Looks, there was you actually be, you one day be, I sat uh, down mm. to, to start counting. Really? And it was 150. Wow. And I told myself that, no, I'm not doing this. So immediately I was well, I stopped. You may be lucky if the drug is just a drug to treat a particular thing, mm -hmm. maybe not an antibiotic, not, maybe not one that you need to 
um, stick with okay. for as long as it is. Okay, like for instance, parastamol. If your doctor says use the parastamol for three days, mm -hmm. and then maybe in two days you are okay, you are very well, okay. you don't see any symptom again or all your complaints, in two days you are fine because okay. it is parastamol. Not any other one. Do you understand? No other one. Mm -hmm. you understand? But when it okay. comes to antibiotics or or those long term ones that stick to the instructions. Stick to the instructions. Wow. Please, okay. That's pretty and then another thing is timing. Okay. When you're to told to use so 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 time, follow the timing, please. Okay. Very important. And then another thing is don't um, don't hand over your drugs to someone else. Oh. In case of okay, um, because you had headache. Okay. Last week, and, and you use paracetamol. Well, so you don't feel, recommend. Yes, to the don't person. recommend to yes. another person. Okay. Because yes. the um, headache, for instance, now comes with virtually, in fact, almost every sickness possible. Sickness. Mm. Okay. You understand? You One of the symptoms the is symptom. headache. Yeah. So you don't assume that um, because this person has had headache as a result of malaria, you are having your own headache too as a result of malaria. Okay. So Thank do yes, that. go for consultations. Okay, you understand, thank you to be so sure, much, yes. Muyua, so, Honestly, I have learned I have lot. learned. Now that, you know, I've been told to complete my drugs, mm. I will do that. Thank my you. My words, I would, I, I, yes. I would try. Thank you. No, please, thank I have you. to do more than try. You have do to more than try. <laughs> stick to it. My you know, be yeah. 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 my, Sorry, can I call you my dear? <laughs> my dear. <laughs> I... Trust me, drug mm. is one thing I know I struggle with a lot. I do not like medications. I do not, but from today, yes. Yes. hopefully I don't think I would have any reason. No, so. okay, we <laughs> hope so, you know, you can, just we like we so. said when we started the show that, you know, you should go for medical checkup from mm -hmm. time to time so that you can know the state of your body. So it's been a really wonderful, interesting, enlightening time here on Tea or Coffee mm -hmm. Wellness Wednesday with pharmacist Muiwa Ola Gonju. We've Thank been talking you. about drug resistance. Mm -hmm. We have learned a lot, and we hope that you too have learned. He said, be aware, be compliant, you know, finish mm -hmm. your dosage, stick to the timing, and, you know, don't recommend your drugs exactly. to another we, you person. You need to emphasize on that. Yes, don't, please. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't be the doctor or someone mm -hmm. else. You know, just speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. And also, yes, again, go for a medical checkup. Oh, it's been a really wonderful time here on Tea yeah. or Coffee this beautiful Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. This is the time that we have to wrap up. Don't forget, you can follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, on Facebook, and you can watch us and catch us up on YouTube. YouTube. And, and don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Yes. yes. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> so we will come back tomorrow again for another entertaining, exciting, educating time here on Tea or Coffee. Wora, do you have any words? Uh, all I have to say right now is make sure you keep smiling and put smiles on faces of people around you. Yeah, I'm say. smiling. I'm going to smile all through today. <laughs> all right. You have a really beautiful day. Yes, I am Wora Ola Pukwala. And I'm Oluwa Shem Do have a good day. Bye. Bye.